Hello guys, this is Krynus here and today we're taking a look at block properties in Minecraft Forge. First thing we want to do is go into our block init.java, then we want to remove the method 2 from our block init and make the method 1 be the exact same as the old method 2. So we're gonna go example block new. Then we want to head over to the example block class. First thing we need to do is fix up our super, so we need to supply properties to it. That means we want to go abstract block dot properties dot off material dot metal. After that, let's look at a few more properties that we could set. For example, we could set a light level. That means our block will emit light, similar to a torch. How we implement that is we go dot light level and now we need to supply a to int function with the block state as a parameter. So we are gonna go state into a lambda and we want to return the desired light level, for example 14 in this case. Now we can also do this without curly brackets as you will see now. We can just map the state onto the 14 so it will return the 14 out of that lambda. That is what a toInt function does. It takes in data, for example our state right now, and it will return a light level. So if you change anything on the block state, you can alter the light level inside this function block. Now let's have a look at one of the most important properties, in my opinion, that is dot .strength. And this will be the value how easy your block is to mine with a pickaxe, for example. So higher strength means that our block is more resilient to explosions and it will also mean that it is harder to mine. And we can do both parameters in one or we can set each one individually. So let's look at uh, the block class so we can get an idea of how those values come to be. So head over to blocks.java, that is just the vanilla class, and we will see in the properties here that, for example, the iron block has a strength of 5f and 6f. That means our block now will have the same strength and resistance as the iron block has. We can also set the harvest tool, that means the tool which is effective on this block. We want to go dot harvest tool and inside that we want to have tool type dot whatever it is that is effective on your block, like pickaxe in this example. And you can also set a harvest level that will be wood 0, um, stone 1, iron 2, diamond 3 and the highest level you can set is netherite with 4. We can also set a variable up that is uh, called requires correct tool for drops. That means that our block needs to be harvested with the pickaxe, otherwise it won't drop its block. Now let's create some of our block state properties. We want to have a public static final boolean property and I'm just gonna call that example property. That will be boolean property dot create and you are gonna call it example. Be careful this needs to be in all lowercase letters otherwise it will not work. Let's create a second property, we will call that uh, direction property and we want to call it facing and this will be direction property dot create. Again it needs to be supplied with a name, we are gonna call it facing because that is what this property will indicate, which way the block we placed will be facing. You need to supply the directions that the block can be in. So for example, if it only has a horizontal plane, that means it can be north, south, west and east, or it can be also up, down. You can make all sorts of adjustments to that. So you can basically supply a list or a collection of the desired directions, or you can just use the direction.plane.horizontal. That means that our block now can only face north, south, west and east. We need a few functions to set up the states correctly. 
The first one will be called create block state definition. It will supply a state container dot builder of block block state. And we want to rename that parameter instantly to builder because that is what it is. And we also want to supply that to the super. Now what we need to do is supply our parameters to the builder. So we want to have builder.add and we're going to reference the property directly. So facing and example property. And this will be everything we need inside of this function. After this, we want to have in the constructor a register default state. To that we want to supply this dot default block state dot set value. This will be the initial values, the values with which the properties will be initialized if there is nothing found. We want to have default block state dot set value, example property with false, and the facing value it is very common to have it set to direction dot north if there is nothing else found. Now it wouldn't do any good if we couldn't alter these properties when we place the block. That is the entire point why we're doing this to alter the block state when placed in a specific way. For example, if we're placing it in a direction. So what we want to do is we want to override get state for placement. This will uh, give us a block item context. We want to rename that to context and we completely want to remove the super. Now we need to return a block state. So we need to return default block state dot set value. And for this, we want to supply the properties. For example, our example property will be set to context dot get player. And this will track if the player is crouching. So if the player is crouching, this will be set to true. And it says to replace with objects that require non-null, we can ignore that. Now for the facing property, we want to have something similar. We want to have dot set value and inside we want to reference the facing. And we want to get it from context.get horizontal direction. So we want to get the nearest direction the player is looking. And we want to get the opposite. So it's always facing us when we place down the block. Let's see how that looks inside the game. We have our blocks that we placed in the last episode. All of them defaulted to example block, example false. And now we can actually mine them. We're going to go into creative. And if we destroy the blocks and place them new, we can see now that the facing property is set up to face us. So we are facing north, block is facing south. Let's do another direction. We're going to face east, west, and if we face south, of course, it's going to be north. Now let's check if our crouching property works uh, properly and it does. So it tracks if the block is placed while crouching. That is our example that we set up in our example block.java. Now you should have a understanding of how to do block state properties and how to work with them and how to set them up correctly. There's a lot of things you can accomplish with this example. And I reckon that you try it out in your own free time with some different properties. See if you can actually get other properties to work like I did and have fun with it. And we're going to see each other in the next episode.